Hi, it's Ross King here, back in the hood, and the hood, of course, is Hollywood. Now, you don't see an awful lot of buses here, but it is pretty much the same as everywhere else. You wait for one, along come three at the same time. It's a bit like popes out here. Yes, we were waiting for a pope, and then along came the two popes. You see where I'm going with this? The movie, The Two Popes, featuring two of our most celebrated actors, Sir Anthony Hopkins and Jonathan Price. Jonathan Price was the first man that I interviewed when I was about 16 in local radio. I reminded him of that. He had no recollection whatsoever. So Anthony Hopkins is one of my favorites to interview because believe it or not, he really is one of the funniest men you can interview. Does the most brilliant Tommy Cooper impression. Trust me, it comes in at the most inopportune and funny moments. Anyway, The Two Popes, brilliant movie. Jonathan Price nominated for an Oscar. It's on Netflix. I enjoyed meeting up with just simply two of the greats. Brilliant to see you as always. Thank you. Congrats. Yeah, in Southern California. It's not a bad old life, is it? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's good apart from the weather, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so this movie, what I love is that on social media, you've got that lovely, just a bad old dude on social media. Oh, I saw the photograph. Yeah, yeah. The bad old dude plays the Pope. That's right. A <laughs> little bit of a juxtaposition. Well, yeah. I take everything lightly. I mean... I, I, talking about the film, I thought it was, um, uh, it was a surprise. I, I don't mean that in an, any pejorative sense, but uh, you know, it's, it's a very pleasant film to do, easy to do. Jonathan Price was astonishing. So I didn't know Jonathan that well. We had worked briefly, oh, maybe 30 years ago, but we wave, wave across the restaurant now and again. But it turned out he's the most pleasant man I've worked with. Uh, very laid back, different approach to things that I do, and uh, and uh, um, uh, Fernando Morales, a wonderful director. Uh, you know, just easy to work with, and I had a ball of time. You say different approach. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, Jonathan likes to. He told me anyway. I don't know if he's lying. <laughs> he, he said that he couldn't deny the Pope, but no, he said he said that uh, he doesn't like to learn all the script beforehand. Right. Which I think is terrific, but I have to because I'm stricken with terror that I may forget my lines. I've always had that. Uh, I have sometimes those recurring dreams, nightmares. I'm going on stage, I don't know where I am, what the play is. So I think my subconscious drives me to learn everything. I'm, I'm not a control freak, but I, I like to know the whole text, devour it, you know, and chew it over. <laughs> And sleep on it, and uh, then I find it easier to work. But that, you know, it makes life easier for me. That's the way my brain works. Our relationship uh, is mirrored by the relationship on film because it's it's you see them kind of sniffing each other out like two dogs, and then <laughs> then slowly they get to like each other and uh, respond well to each other, and then they end up tangoing. <laughs> you know, so uh, and that was a bit like me and Tony. I'm not saying we were sniffing around each other, but the um, you know I didn't I. I worked with him briefly on uh, Under Milk Wood, a recording that George Martin produced. But I didn't know what he was going to be like. You know, he could, it could have been a very difficult relationship. But um, we both responded to each other really well. And um, we, had a, we had a lot of fun. Um, as well as... Uh, and I, I know Fernando has talked about the diff our different characters, the way we work, Fernando the director because Tony likes to work everything out in advance and he likes to learn the script and he, he likes, he even invents bits of business that, um, is that and uh, when I was doing a scene with him and in the middle of the, he suddenly went like this. I thought, gosh, there's a fly. And uh, then when you see the film, there's a bzzz, and he, and it was all prearranged. He didn't tell me he was gonna do it, but he told Fernando, at this point, I will swat away a fly. And it's just amazing. I, I saw that, and I, I, yeah. I presumed it was. A real, and I thought, this is great, they've just kept yeah. going. Well, I thought it was real, because he kept going. <laughs> And then I thought, a bloody fly keeps coming back at the same time in the speech. Weird. Um, and uh. Fernando said that uh, Tony's approach is like classical music, and I'm more jazz, because yeah. I'm, I like to um, feel my way into things. And, uh, and I like... Well, it's great as the character does it. I like to listen a lot, and uh, I listened a lot to Tony, and um, I was, it was just great. And it was, I was looking at, at times, yes, I was looking at him as Pope Benedict, but other times I'm sitting there thinking, 
Oh, this is Tony Hopkins, and he's um, he's really good. <laughs> Great. He's got a he's got a career ahead yeah, of him. Yeah. For an eighty yeah. two year old, it's all ahead of him, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> His style is different to mine, and yet we got on so well. And we had a lot of fun. We laughed a lot. And the big joke was that um, um, he had a number one dressing room, <laughs> and I was number two. So I said, "I am Sir Number Two. So I got. On. <laughs> so we had the joke every day. I said, "Morning." Uh, so I said, "Dear Number Two, how are you this morning?" It's sort of all to do with the call sheet where you've got your. You've got your name, your character's name, and there's a number assigned to it because then they can put it on the, the scene, the scenes you're going to do. But your number is uh, rated uh, according to your importance to the film. And I was number one and he was number two. And it, it didn't rankle too much, but he's, he's not very often number two. But he used to greet me every morning with uh, morning number one. <laughs> And uh, I go, morning number two. And, um, <laughs> and that continued until we finished filming and uh, we'd email each other and he signs off his emails to me as uh, lots of love, whatever, sir number two. Aww. So he gets his own back. I'm just 82 now, so I can do what I like and don't have to do the things I don't want to do. And uh, now I can't take any of it. You know, I enjoy it. I, I mean, I've, you know, I work hard. I can't really call it work, but I, you know, it's uh, no big deal. Um, you know, it's, there's nothing to win, nothing to prove, nothing to win, nothing to lose, and no sweat, no big deal. And I'm just lucky that they give me jobs to do in this business. keeps me out of trouble, uh, keeps my brain working. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm very fortunate, very fortunate to be doing this business. Mightily grateful. So I can't take myself seriously in it, you know, that's for fun and for free. Well, it's funny, when I was watching Use the Port, and I've been lucky to have chatted with you a few times, and we've had some laughs, and you've done your Tommy Cooper impression, and as I'm watching Use the Pope, I'm thinking of you doing the Tommy Cooper impression. Just like that, thank you for that. <laughs> yes, you <might> <laughs> That's exactly what so I'm like that. I was with my wife the other day, and I said, oh dear, she said, what's the matter? I said, I'm feeling homesick. She said, but you are a dumb, I know I'm sick of it. <laughs> See, he was the he was the existentialist comedian of all time. Yeah, he made everyone laugh because he's such a fool. <laughs> and that's what we all are. Really. We don't know much. You got to relax. You can't take yourself too seriously. The actors tend, when especially the young, and I was like that, take yourself too seriously, which I suppose is part of ambition and pushing you forward. But there comes a time when you, well, for me, I just have to lighten up, and I can't take myself too seriously at all. <laughs> I'm an actor. I'm a clown, you know. Wait, I get that huge impression from you it's almost like you go I've just let it go because it, it's easy for you that's what's brilliant well Robert Mitchum was asked a story once they said why do you act he said beats working <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big a deal and I try to say to people you know let's have some fun because it's a big sleep at the end of it all <laughs> anyway thanks a lot thank you so much thank it's you always good to see you there you have it two of our most celebrated actors in a really great movie the two popes enjoy it it is superb and very different acting styles but when they come together most amazing chemistry i shall be digging into my little vault for you to bring out some more gems over the coming weeks so until then from the hood which is hollywood see you soon now if you've enjoyed our little chats and i hope you have and you'd like some more then all you have to do is click right here for some more good morning showbiz videos